face. And we give him all the praise this morning, all the honor and thanks. You'd like to come forward, please? I had to pause for a minute because I've been pastor, pray for our pastor. He had some news, some touching news as he come in, but he'll be, he's, he's here, and he'll be over. But uh, my mind went blank after we had prayer in the parking lot, me and him, he was telling me about it, but God is still in control. We serve our almighty God. One that sits high, who yeah. looks mighty low, yeah. that has all power, not some power, but all power all in his hand. Yeah. The world yeah. was not created by man. Yeah. He was created by God, yeah. and we just thank him. So join us this morning, because we're not going to let the, no, no devil anything come upon us. That we created, because God created life, and he created and gave us more abundantly. And we just thank him this morning. No weapon formed against us shall prosper, for we're more than conquerors in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus, Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. We said thank you, for you brought us from a mighty long way. You seem fit bright and early this morning to look down from heaven with an eye of pity and a finger of tender love. Yeah. You touched us, Heavenly Father, and rose us up on due time, clothed in our right mind with a portion of our strength and help. Yeah. And we said, thank you. Lord, we come before you for no show, fun, or fashion to this outside, unfriendly world. But we come before you, Lord, because you said every knee must bow and every head tell must conf- tongue shall confess. Yeah. And we said, thank you, Lord. Oh, our sweet lily of the valley, our bright and morning star, our bridge over troubled water when them waves get to rocking and rolling. Yeah. For on your solid rock we stand when all around us is sinking sand. We just said, thank you, Heavenly Father, Oh, you've been so good. Mary, baby, bridge over troubled water. Continue to lead and guide us. Take us by our hand, Father God. When we get weak, weary, wounded, and sad, we found that you are resting place and you have made us glad. And we said, thank you, Father God. Asking that you can touch, go over and touch Reverend Reed right now, Father God. Touch him and hold him up on every leaning side. For we know, Father God, that he's a man of God. He's your shepherd, your under shepherd that you have placed here in this church. And Father God, as we prepare for the service, oh, we cast that devil that under our feet in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We give you all the honor. We scratch our hands and deep for no other help than we know. If thine will withdraw thyself from thee, oh, where shall we go? For, Father God, you are the potter and we are the common clay. Melt us, mold us, make us in thine will. While we're yet patiently waiting, yielded and still. And, Father God, we just say thank you. We praise your holy and righteous name. Continue to lead us. Continue to guide. When man's heart have gotten hard and turned from your ways, Father God, continue to build us up where we're torn down. Make us strong where we are weak. And we'll be so careful to give you all the honor, all the highest praise, and glory to thy name. In Jesus' name. No other name that we know. No other name above in heaven or down throughout the earth, greater than the name of Jesus. You are healer, you are savior, and you are praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And we say hallelujah, 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 and let's give God some praise, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.
Good morning, my sisters and my brothers this morning. Good morning to my sisters and my brothers online. This is Andrew Chapel, United Methodist Church in Jonesboro, Georgia. We welcome you this morning. This is a great day in the Lord. Oh God, I invoke your presence this morning, Lord. God, will you come and join us this morning? We need a word from you, Lord, this morning. We need some healing this morning, oh Lord. Oh yes, please come into this house, Lord. We come, Lord, thanking you, Lord, because you've been so good. Because you've been our source of strength. You hear what I say? You're the one that woke us up this morning. You're the one that started us on our way. You're the one that keeps us moving from day to day. Hey, you're the one that, that is with us through the night. You're the one that carried us all day, all night long. You're the one that lifted me up when I fell. You're the one that lifted you up. Oh, you're the one, Lord. You're the one. You're the one, Lord, that wiped the tears from our eyes when we are burning them down. You're the one that forgives. Yeah. You're the one. Yeah. And for that, I say thank you, Lord. Thank you for giving us a Savior, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, let the Holy Spirit just move this morning. Move on Pastor Reed this morning. Move on the choir this morning. We got work to do in the kingdom. We got work to do. Will you stand this morning for our hymn of praise? And I'm going to ask you to remain standing after the song of praise for our litany for Father's Day in just a moment.
Brittany for Father's Day. We will repeat. I just want to wish all the fathers a happy Father's Day. Grandfather, stepfather. Big daddy. <laughs> Oh Lord, today we celebrate you and the model you have provided us through the men of your kingdom. Thank, Thank you, o Lord, for our grandfathers, fathers, uncles, brothers, and elders who teach us, guide us, and protect us. Thank you for the men in our lives who sometimes have to fill these roles in the absence of our elder men. Happy are those who do not follow the advice of the wicked or take the path that sinners tread or sit in the seat of scoffers, but their delight is in the law of the Lord and his law. They meditate day and night. May we always be mindful to love on another, even as you loved us. Oh Lord, may we always be mindful to teach our children to love as you love. Teach, teach, teach us your ways, O oh Lord, and we shall be to them with sincere hearts. And all together, let the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. You may be seated. Our lessons. Our lessons from the Holy Scripture will come from the Old Testament, Proverbs, the first chapter, 8 through 19 verses. That will be by Sister Ella Armstead. And the New Testament will be by uh, Sister Lord's Pert, Philippians, the fourth chapter, verses 4 through 9. And after the Scriptures are read, it will be followed by Minister Jackie Parker's altar call for prayer. Amen. Good morning, Andrews Chapel. Good morning. Happy Father's Day to all of our fathers in the house today. Amen. Everyone um, listening virtually. Um, happy Father's Day. I'll be reading from Proverbs chapter 1, verses 8 through 19. And it reads, Hear, my, chil my child, excuse me, your father's instruction, and do not reject your mother's teaching, for they are a fair garland for your head and pendants for your neck. My child, if sinners entice you, do not consent. If they say, come with us, let us lie in wait for blood. Let us wantonly ambush the innocent. Like Sheol, let us swallow them alive and whole, like those who go down to the pit. We shall find all kinds of costly things. We shall fill our houses with booty. Throw in your lot among us. We will all have one purse. My child, do not walk in their way. Keep your foot from their paths. For their feet run to evil, and they hurry to shed blood. 
For in vain is the net baited while the bird is looking on, yet they lie in wait to kill themselves and set an ambush for their own lives. Such is the end of all who are greedy for gain. It takes away the life of its possessors. May the Lord bless a reading for his word. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. And happy Father's Day to everyone also. I will be reading the New Testament, Philippians 4, 4 to 9, and it reads as follows. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Jesus, in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there's any excellence and if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, and the God of peace will be with you. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. Amen. 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 Good morning, church family. Good morning. Happy Father's Day to all fathers and grandfathers and brothers and uncles and all of those, as uh, Pastor Reed said, big daddies. You know, I remember my had a loving father. And I thought about him last, last night. God is so good. He lived to be 99 and a half. And all those years, he's only taken one baby aspirin. And he was, he was totally blind. But you know, he never forgot who you were. You could come into the house and you could ask him anything. And I would go home and I would stand by him and I'm like, Dad. You know who I am? And he would touch my arm. He said, yeah, kid, I know who you are. <laughs> you know, it was the touch. It's the touch that our Heavenly Father gives us. It's a touch that our Heavenly Father displays to us when we're down, when we're out, but he leaves us so much. And now is our time for prayer. And these words to this song says, Father, help your children. Don't let them fall by the side of the road. Teach them to love one another that heaven may find a place in their heart. Yes. And so today the altar is open for those who wish to come. And if you decide not to come and you want to just step forward and hold hands and be seated, that's okay too because he knows all about 
our troubles, our circumstances, our issues, he already knows. I pray that you would lift up prayers, not only today for fathers, but lift up prayers for our mothers, Mother Helen Davenport and Mother Ellen Brown. Lift up prayers for Mother Rosa Bivens and Mother Catherine Stein and Mother Mabel Williams. There are so many that's on the sick and shut-in list. It's about 32, so it's always good to pray for our homes and our community, our church families, because there's so much that is going on in the world. Pray for our young people. Pray for our seniors. Pray for our pastor and first lady. The word says pray without ceasing. And we want to be obedient to the word of God. Heavenly Father, we just come now, Lord God, just thanking you, Lord God. Thanking you for being the father of all fathers, Lord God. Thanking you, Lord God, for first loving us enough, Lord God, to give your son Jesus Christ, Lord God. To go to the cross and die for our sins, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, that you raised him up, Lord God, with all power in his hands, Lord God. Lord, we just thank you right now, Lord God, for who you are and who you are in us, Lord God. Father, we thank you for your love. A love that covers every aspect in our life. We thank you, Lord God, for allowing us to come this morning, Lord God, on highways and byways, Lord God. Unharmed, unhurt, Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for being here right now, Lord God. See, Father, we come, Lord God, not for any show of fashion or form. Lord God, but we come, Lord God, to give you praise and honor and glory. And Lord God, if I can't praise you, Lord God, Lord God, if I cannot praise you, Lord God, there's no need for me to be here. So Lord God, I just want to thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord God, for covering our homes, covering our children, Lord God, covering, Lord God, our fathers, Lord God, our sons, Lord God, our grandfathers, Lord God. Covering them, Lord God. Lord God, I thank you, Lord God, for going into hospitals, Lord God. For touching those who are sick, those who are waiting, Lord God, on medical reports. Those, Lord God, who are suffering, Lord God, with illnesses, Lord God. Only you, Lord God, can heal. And we know you as a healer, Lord God, because we know you as the greatest physician. So, Father, we pray for healing now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, your word said that Jesus was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities, that the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. And, Lord, I'm claiming it in the name of Jesus. Father, I'm praying, Lord God, that you would touch Pastor Reed, Lord God. I know him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, Lord God, to bring a word from you this morning, Lord God. Lord God, I pray, Lord God, for First Lady Natalie, Lord God, that you cover her, Lord God. Cover their family, Lord God. Lord God, meet their every need. Father, I just thank you, Lord God. Go in and out, Lord God. Lord God, send forth your Holy Spirit this morning, Lord God. For it's not about us, Lord God. It's all about you, Lord God. For we want to be the church, Lord God, that you called on, Lord God. Father, we just thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. Even when the world is in turmoil, Lord God, you still, Lord God, allow us to have joy. A joy that's unspeakable, Lord God. One that can't be measured, Lord God. So, Father, we just thank you right now for joy, Lord God. And we thank you for peace, Lord God. Peace that comes, Lord God, with all understanding, Lord God. We thank you for peace. 
church family to cover our fathers Lord God to be the man of God you want them to be to cover our community our neighbors cover us Lord God only you can And Lord God, all we can say is that we love you and we thank you. It is in your holy and righteous name that we pray this morning. Amen. 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 Amen.
good to know Jesus for yourself. So when you say you know him, you can say, let me tell you what Jesus did for me. When I was out uh, and down, he lifted me up. When I was sick, he healed me. That's what Jesus did. Because you, you can testify. Because you're on the scene. You're an eyewitness. Hallelujah. Yes. This morning, we will have recognition of visitors and guests by Sister Jeanette Crowder. My mouth big enough now. <laughs> I'm sorry, Allison. I didn't know that what you were telling me. I can't read. But anyway, we are so happy that you are here this morning. And join in with us and celebrate and enjoy. Uh, I'll give it, i put it over in the hands of Reverend Reed, who will formally uh, uh, welcome you into the service. And again, happy Father's Day. Good morning, everyone. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. This is the day God has made. I will rejoice and be glad in this day. We welcome you to this wonderful uh, worship service as we honor fathers and grandfathers and father figures today. All of you, we honor you and we recognize you. Thank you for worshiping with us. To those of you that are guests here, I did not see hands, but were there persons that stood up? <laughs> on the left, on the left, on the left, on the left. There were some persons that are guests, family members and friends, and we thank you for being here with us. And for those that are worshiping virtually with us, we are delighted to have you here as well. If you are a guest today, why don't you type something in the chat feature so that we can recognize you and we'll reach out to you and know that if you're looking for a church home today, look no further. We would love to have you be a part of this wonderful fellowship. I, I say often, because you are here, the Lord is here. How can I say that? How do I know? Because Jesus said, wherever two or three would gather in his name, he would be right there in that gathering. Therefore, because you are with us, the Lord himself is here, and we are thankful. Whenever you have opportunity and our doors are open, join with us for worship, for prayer, for study, for praise. We would always love to have you. Now, for those of us at home, for those at home, from us to you, everybody in the house, give them a great big welcome. Give them a shout out this morning. Welcome, friends. Welcome to you. And of course, fathers and Father's Day and father figures, we don't get all the love that all the mothers do. We understand. We understand. We have big shoulders. You can treat us bad like that, but that's all right. No, no, uh, I recognize that oftentimes uh, on Mother's Day, the house will be filled. On Father's Day, uh, uh, but that's all right. Reggie, we're here. Yes, sir, we, we're here. So let us stand and greet one another, show some love to everyone in the house, and welcome them today. Come on, let's rise and share some love. Welcome today on this Father's Day, and happy Father's Day to all.
Okay, next on our program, we have the parents and those students. I don't see anything on here for birthday, so I'm not sure if it's appropriate. Oh, just one for mine. Okay. We're going to have the parish notices. Parish notices. Good morning, church. Happy Father's Day again to all the fathers. Happy Father's Day to Pastor Reed. I see some of my family in the house. Some of the Glass family is in the house. So good to see you, family. Amen. I have um, been assigned to read the parish notices this morning. I'll start off with a message from the United Women in Faith. The United Women in Faith will have its monthly meeting by Zoom on tomorrow, Monday, June the 17th at 7 p.m. Note, there will be no monthly meeting for the months of July and August as the unit will be on break for summer, so please join. Thank you, Mrs. Claudette Neal, the United Women in Faith President. Family Ministries, the Family Ministries Committee presents Hattitude 2024 on the fourth Sunday of this month which is June 23rd, next Sunday. Everyone is invited to wear a hat that best represents their attitude for that day. Special recognition will be given for the best hat in four categories. One, casual, two, formal, and fancy, fun and unique, and four, professional. Virtual watchers and members who will be absent on Fourth Sunday are also encouraged to participate by sending a picture in your hat to the Communications Committee by Wednesday, June the 19th. The email address is acumc7054 at comcast.net. A special video montage of these pictures will be played at the beginning and end of worship service. Details are included in a flyer that was handed out this morning by the morning greeter. If you did not get one, please pick up one as you exit the sanctuary. We look forward to celebrating with everyone, young and old, in person or away. Thank you. The 150th Church Anniversary Committee. The 150th Church Anniversary Committee has been formed, and we invite you to get excited about this monumental occasion to occur in 2025. The planning for this celebration is in the works in conjunction with the church historian and her committee. Over the next few weeks and months, we will be looking for ideas to raise seed money, including any church council approved fundraisers and individual, corporate, community, and group donations, just to name a few funding sources. Your thoughts, ideas, creativity, energy, and enthusiasm are needed in order to make this grand occasion a spectacular one. 150th anniversary suggestion boxes will soon be placed in the vestibule, as well as in the Arnold Education Building, in the library on the first floor, and by the lower level east stairwell. More communications are planned to keep you updated on our progress. In the meantime, you can share your ideas with Ms. Deidre Raines, Ms. Cornelia Smith, or Mr. Randy Reed, or Dr. Connie Ward, a church historian. The names of additional committee members will be shared with you at a future date. Thank you. Next, we will have tribute to fathers. And we have a list of people you come against coming to the front. Trinity Henry, Justice Henry, Cal Ranson, Kennedy, and Michelle Moody. Good morning, Andrew Chapel. I just wanted to start by saying um, happy Father's Day to all the fathers, um, to all those who mentor those in the community, the community fathers, biological fathers, adoptive fathers, foster fathers, um, and say congratulations because God has entrusted you with people to steward, for, with people to help grow, 
um, and with people for you to speak wisdom into. My favorite thing to say about my dad is, don't worry. I can just call my dad, I'll, I'll call him. He'll figure it out. <laughs> There's something, my car is making a sound. Can you sell me $50? Um, something's not going right. Should I change my major? Don't worry about it. I'll just call my dad. But I wanted to say happy Father's Day to all of you, all of you who offer rides, all of you who will call, who will send cards, who help the young men. It takes a special person to do that and to stay in this community and help those. And I also wanted to say to give the men in your life flowers. They didn't, they're not, I don't think they're getting flowers today, but give them flowers. The first time a lot of men get flowers in their life is at their funeral, unfortunately. So give them their flowers. They might not like flowers. Ask them what they want, something. Something other than t-shirts and socks. But ask them what they want and get them their flowers because they deserve it. And the message that a lot of our fathers in the community are telling us is that we are worth sacrificing for and they are the same. Thank you. Hello, um, I would also like to say happy Father's Day to all the fathers out there. Um, as a young man, possibly gonna be a father one day, I would like to say it is a big responsibility as a father and I feel like all the fathers out there know that. Um, today is a great day to show your gratitude for the fathers out there and just the roles that they play in their life. I would like to say happy Father's Day to my dad because for those who are in the church, most Sundays you could ask, oh, where's your dad? And he's normally at work. So I would like to say, I'd like to show my gratitude for my father and to all the men out there. And yeah, happy Father's Day. Good morning, church. Good morning. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers in the congregation and that's visiting online. First thing I would like to say is that God said he made man in his image. Yeah. And what better image could he make man in than in the father himself? Yeah. I always tell people that there is no hood harder, harder than fatherhood. And what that means is that it takes discipline, it takes strength, and it takes courage in order to stand in this world and raise a child the way that they should go. Um, we look around today, and in the black community especially, it is very important that we have our fathers. We have gone generations from abuse, from trauma and neglect, to the point to where now it's starting to show its roots in our community. So uh, today I wanna give the time to give the flowers to our coaches, our teachers, our representatives, our pastors, and each and every man in our lives that has helped mentor us and train us in the way that we should go. Because like the Bible says, you should train a child up in the way that he or she shall go, and they will not depart from it. So on this Father's Day, I wanna say thank you to my father for working hard each and every day of your life, for making my life as easy as it could be, and just for being there when I know that I would need someone to be there. I hope one day to be able to follow in your footsteps and be at least half the man that I know you are. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers out here, and I hope y'all have a great week. Good morning. Um, unfortunately, Michelle and Kennedy could not make it today because they were not feeling well, so I am Michelle and Kennedy. Um, I just want to say Happy Father's Day to all the fathers that are here. Um, please excuse my voice. I'm not sick, I promise. Um, I'm not from here, so all the fathers like Uncle Reggie and Uncle Ira have most definitely been there for me when I needed them. And now that I'm going to cry, I'm going to stop. So what do you have to say? Yeah. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> Good morning. One more time. And happy, happy, happy Father's Day to all the fathers. I would just like to offer to you from the worship committee, the communion stewardess, and our pastor. It's just a little small token, but it's a gift from God and from the heart. And it says, the Lord make, the Lord make his, his face to shine upon you yeah. and gracious to you. Yeah. The Lord lift up his countenance unto you and give you peace. And it's a little small token. You can keep it in your car, or you can just keep it in your computer room, or in the man cage, 
it's just a little prayer just in case you need to pray. You could just read that. That's just like talking to the Lord through prayer. The Lord, and, and the little token says, the Lord will be with you wherever you go. Amen. And it's, it's small, and it also has a little tag in the back letting you know that Reverend Reed is the pastor of this church. And if you have a friend or somebody that you want to invite, you can give them that little ticket and tell them, this is our address. Come on to Andrew's Chapel. We would love to have you. And on that note, I just want to say happy, happy Father's Day. Enjoy your day. Enjoy your week. And God bless you. And thank you for being the fathers that you are. Amen. Keep up the good work. <laughs> Will all fathers please stand? Please stand. We don't want to slight anyone. We have little tokens that we want to give you. Urshas, can, can one of the two of you, the Urshas, help out, please? <laughs> Go help pass my up. <laughs> Pastor, will it be too much to ask them to come, the fathers to come down and we just get a snapshot of them? And you come, you stand in the middle. Come on down. Stop. Stop being bad and be obedient. Come on, fathers. Come on. Come on. Make your way to the front. Do I need to go brush my hair? No, you're good. You're good. You look good, just like you are. <laughs> Come on, fathers, come on. Shame on them, shame on. Don't be shamed. <laughs> Where Allison? Allison needs to be taking that picture. Look at these men. Don't they look handsome? Oh, look at them. They look so good. God bless y'all. All these fathers in church. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Smile. <laughs> now smile. Smile. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Testing one, two.
Brothers and sisters, we have the opportunity today to do what is ultimately the most important act of worship that we'll ever engage in. And that is the baptism and welcoming of another child of God into the kingdom of God. On this day, we pause to receive these persons. And if you have hymnals before you, uh, if you don't mind, share with us. We'll be uh, turning to page 33 in the litany at the beginning of the book. And we'll use the baptism ritual and membership covenant number one found on page 33. We offer a moment for you to turn to that page. And if you would share that page, share your book with others. Uh, that are nearby. For our candidates and those that are, and the families that are here, when we invite you up in a few moments, uh, if we would bring, if you would bring a hymnal with you and you can follow along with me. But if you don't have a hymnal, it's okay. I will lead us through this portion of our service. Page 33. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation, and we're given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. We affirm those that come for baptism and affirm those that come for membership. I would ask if my lovely assistant today, <laughs> if Sister Pettis would present now our candidates that will come up in just a few moments when I call for them. Okay, I would present you to you all the candidates, but if I pronounce your name wrong, charge it to my head and not my heart. <laughs> I'm going to do my best. <laughs> we have Nevaeh Johnson, Diagene Brooks, Desire, Diagene Harrison, okay, Dejane Harrison, Diara J. Harrison, Dream Stevenson, Oasis Dumas, and De Dejone Harris. All right. Harrison. Harry. All right. <laughs> Amen. You did wonderfully well. Amen. As we go into this, first I'm going to invite the candidates and the families to come and stand at the altar. And so now if you would come, but bring your hymnal with you if you have one. And I would ask that you would uh, spread out so that we're on both sides of the altar and leave an opening here in the middle. If the candidates would come along with their families. <clears throat> And as we come up, I'm going to ask where my ushers today, if they would come and assist in bringing the uh, baptismal font to the center. Excuse me, I'm sorry. We forgot to announce Decario, Decario Johnson. And he's coming for baptism. As we dedicate him to the Lord. Amen. Look at the right. Right here. And that way we'll try to leave a little space. Thank you, brothers. Thank you, sister.
to the parents that are before us, to their grandparents, guardians, their play mothers, play fathers, I ask those of you standing before me as candidates as well, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and do you repent of your sin? If so, say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and the power that God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves and your response should be, I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your savior? Put your whole trust in his grace and promise to serve him as your Lord along with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, all nations and races and your response should be, I do. To the parents of these two children, will you nurture these two in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and your example, they may be guided to accept God's grace for themselves, to profess their faith openly, and will you work to lead them in living a Christian life? Will you? To the rest, to those that are standing who can speak for yourselves as candidates for baptism. According to the grace given to you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? And your response should be, I will. to you as parents and grandparents of these two infants. Will you sponsor these two children and support and encourage them in their Christian lives? Say, I will. Amen. Amen. Church, I ask you, all who are of the body of Christ, do you as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include all of these candidates before you today in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these persons with a community of love and forgiveness that they may grow in their trust of God and be found faithful in their service to others. We will pray for them that they may be true disciples who walk in the way that leads to life. Therefore, family of God, let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and the New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead, on the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Let the church say amen. amen.
At this time, I would ask if the candidates and family members would be seated for just a moment. Amen. Now I want the uh, parents of the small ones to, to remain. I should have said that at first, but if you'll just uh, stay with us, because I want to start with you.
will be with you always. Keep us to the end. Sometimes it's going to be alone. But know that you are not alone. I'm going to invite our first candidate to come up. <laughs> All right. Give us your name. Dear Jay. Dear Jay, we're going to start with you. If, if you'll pull the towel around your neck. Will you lean on my chair? Dear Jay, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Dear Jay, the Holy Spirit work within you that being born of water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. And you are Diagene. Diagene. Would you kneel, please, Diagene? And you will pull that around your neck. Diagene, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Diagene, the Holy Spirit work within you that being born of water and the Spirit, you may be born and be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. And the people of God said, Dream. Dream. I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. Dream the Holy Spirit work within you that being born of water and the Spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. And the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Dejeuner. Dejeuner. Dejeuner, I baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Dejeuner, the Holy Ghost works within you that being born of water and spirit, you may be a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Dijonet. 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 Oasis. Oasis.
These are your sons and daughters. Amen. It's up to you to live the right life before them as well. If you sit in the pews and complain, then they do the same thing. If you sit back and, and nitpick about the choir not doing this or the preacher not doing that or this taking too much or that not being enough, they may learn to do the same thing. But if you praise the Lord, if you're thankful for everything that God gives you, if you give, give joyfully, they'll learn to give joyfully. If you volunteer to serve as an usher, they may, in fact, Oasis, have you not already volunteered to serve as an usher? And she's already been And I have her shirt ready for you. You can pick it up today. Everybody say yeah. 
Jesus. Oh Jesus. Oh how I love, love calling your name. Oh Jesus. Oh Jesus, Jesus. Every day. When I needed you, Jesus, you were right there. When all of my problems had just begun, you told me not to worry about them. They were already won. When I felt so all alone, Lord, you told me all I had to do was call. Sometimes was in the morning, sometimes late at night. But when I got up off my knees, Jesus, everything, everything was all right. When I needed you, Jesus, you were right there. Seemed like all my problems had just begun. But you told me, Jeanette, don't worry, they are already one. Jesus, you were right there. Sometimes in the morning, sometimes late at night. But when I got up off my knees, Jesus, everything was all right. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus.
Amen. Make sure my mic is on. Amen. 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 Um, thank you for your prayers this morning. Um, many of you know that as I was on my way to church this morning, I got a message that one of my best friends, uh, going way back, seminary pastor out in Dallas, Texas, his wife, Marsha, passed suddenly yesterday. And I had just been talking with him. We talk every Sunday morning. We text each other. I encourage him. He encourages me. And last Sunday, I asked him, how was Marsha and the family? And he said, everybody was doing well. But when I looked at my phone on the way this morning, his message said that Marsha passed suddenly yesterday, Marsha Gordon. So I invite your prayers for the Reverend Dr. Tyrone Gordon, Dallas, Texas. And then I received another message that another one of our friends I met when I met the love of my life. I got a message last week that uh, from, from his wife that, she, that he wasn't doing well. He was in hospice and they were giving him a couple of weeks. But something said to me on Tuesday, you better not wait till you come back. So I stopped packing, stopped running around, doing everything I was doing. We were busy trying to get out of town, go to annual conference, picking up this, helping preachers and pastors doing that, and lay people from around the conference were asking for help. Set all of that aside and went over to visit with Marvin. And we talked for an hour. And when I left, I, Spirit said, this may be. So when I saw the message this morning, it simply said, Marvin passed late last night. So I invite you to be in prayer with Marvin for his wife, Linda Anderson. And in the midst of all of those things, uh, there are always family needs, family concerns. So we still solicit your prayers as we go. I invite you to share with me as we take a look now at St. John chapter 16. And I'm just looking at one verse today, and if I can be as good as, as I want to be, then I won't be before you too long. St. John chapter 16 if we could have, take a look at the 33rd verse. The 33rd verse. Let us rest on our feet just for a moment for the reading of the word of God. Jesus turned to his disciples, and here is what he said. I have said this to you so that in me you may have peace. In this world you shall have troubles, tribulations, trials, heartache, pain misunderstandings yes, but be of good cheer yes. why because I have overcome the world this is the word of God for the people of God thanks be to God you may be seated in the presence of God 
in this world, you shall have troubles, trials, tribulations, even persecutions. But be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. Oh God, we come to you in this sacred moment asking your blessings upon our gathering. Give us even your spirit in this moment of the preached word, even as you have blessed us throughout our gathering today. Oh God, we need you. We need your help, we need your strength, we need your power. Speak, Lord, your servants are listening. Comfort those that are discomforted. Discomfort those that are comfortable. Have your way. Lead us and guide us. And glorify yourself through our lives in the living of these days. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Let the church say amen. 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 And amen. I want to talk just for a few moments from the subject, thriving through troubled times. Thriving through troubled times. Thriving. In a post pandemic world. As we joined together with other United Methodists from around the annual conference for the last few days there at Athens, Georgia, it was apparent very quickly that the Methodist Church had changed in size. You could tell that we had gone, we were, had gone through trouble. In fact, someone said, if you, that everyone will experience trouble. Everyone will have their valley experience. There's an old proverb that says, you are either in the midst of trouble, coming out of trouble, or about heading into trouble. Everyone will experience trouble, and it was apparent from the size of the, the numbers that were there that we, as a Methodist church, are experiencing a time of trouble. That's very similar to what Jesus was experiencing here in this Gospel of St. John, for it was, if I, if I got my numbers right, it was three or four months before the crucifixion on Calvary when Jesus turned to them one day and said, the thief comes but to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus saw trouble on the horizon of history and he was trying to prepare his disciples for the trouble that was to come, but I don't think they really got it. Now, some three months later, it is Thursday night of the week that we call Holy Week. He had summoned all of them together for a last meal. We call it the Last Supper. Desiring to help them because he knows that there is trouble just around the corner. Jesus knows that before the sun rises, they will be plunged into trouble that will kill some of them, that will test some of them, that will drive them away. And he knows that in those moments, he will be left all alone. But Jesus said to them, I will be alone. You will leave me, but I will not be alone. He said, I have said this to you that in me you may have peace. In this world, you shall have tribulation. Somebody say trouble. Unfortunately, far too many Christians today still have not heeded Jesus' warning, Jesus' warning, nor understood his meaning. His warning is simple. There is no such thing as a trouble-free life. I'm talking, I'm talking to somebody this morning. No such thing as a trouble-free life. 
You young children of God have just given your lives to him. You have been baptized. You, your baptism has been reaffirmed. Right now you have eternal life. And the devil may even be whispering to you, from now on everything will be all right. You're going to have sunshine and roses. You're going to have blue skies. Everybody is going to love you. You're going to be popular. And everyone is going to pat you on the back. But but the devil is a liar. Nobody, somebody say nobody. Nobody has a trouble-free life. There is no such thing as a trouble-free life. You can have perfect health. You can feel like everything is going your way. You can have been at the park, at a water park on yesterday, but I understand that 11 did not make it home from another gathering at a water park yesterday. Everything was going good. They went out just to have a good time, but they did not return home. There's no such thing as a trouble-free life. There's no such thing as a trouble-free relationship. Oh, y'all faking out there. You faking, you are faking. Can we keep it real? There's no such thing as a trouble-free life. No such thing as a trouble-free relationship. There's no, no, there's no worse feeling than to get home and the, car, the garage go up and the other car is in the garage. That's an adult thing. Somebody will get that. There's no such thing. There's no such thing. Some folk will stay at work rather than to go home and have to deal with trouble. Some folk will work overtime, will volunteer for events around town and to help out here and there just to avoid going home to trouble. There's no such thing as a trouble-free Life, no such thing as a trouble-free home, a relationship, no such thing as a trouble-free church. Oh, somebody better say something. There's always somebody sitting back thinking, grading the choir. Well, they didn't have it today. There's always somebody grading the pastor. I wish pastor would do that. You know that pastor of ours. There's always somebody talking about the ushers. Well, they don't do this, and they don't smile, and they don't. There's always somebody dissatisfied with the life of the church, and rather than to try to help out, you know what they do? Try to pull you down while you're trying to lift up the Lord. Let me pause right there and give you the opportunity to say amen before I. No such thing as a trouble-free life, no such thing as a trouble-free free relationship, trouble-free church. There is no such thing as a trouble-free existence. As you enter into this moment of baptism where your soul has just been saved for eternity, do not be deceived into believing that from now on everything will go your way. No, whoever said it lied. Satan and the world are always trying to deceive us by telling us that we should have a trouble-free life. Yeah, we want to have one, but life is not that way. The disciples were not ready, and neither are we many times in life. That's the problem with life. There's no such thing as a trouble-free existence. But there's no entitlement on life, in life. I don't care if you are a child of God. You are not entitled to have anything. The only thing that we are promised is that God will be with us, and if you are saved, you have an eternal home in the Lord. That's all. He who comes into the world, I don't care how much you have, it can be gone just like that. If you don't believe me, come here, Job. Job, if he were here today, he would say, listen, I was bawling and calling. I was a big shot. I was the big man. I had it going on. I was dripping in gold. I mean, I was dripping in blessing. Job would say, I 
What, what did Pastor Lemon say last Sunday? Job would say, every time I spoke, they thought I ate. <laughs> but one day, Job received news that a storm had come and his, his children, all of them, were killed in the storm. He received news one day that, that rustlers, stealers, had, that thieves had come and stolen the cattle and stolen the oxen and stolen everything. He, Job got so sick, one morning he woke up, one day he was fine, and the next day he was as sick as he could be. Thought he could not get well. Job was so sick that his wife said, all this time you have trusted in God and now you are sick. All this time you've been praying in God and now you got nothing all of this time you've been calling on the name of the Lord and it looks like God turned his back on you you ought to curse God and die there's no such thing as a trouble free life it was Simone Biles at the the 32nd Olympiad back in 19, 2019, I think it was. You can check me on that. I don't remember. I've got a senior moment right now. <laughs> Simone Biles uh, uh, called the greatest of all time. You know, Simone, that, that black Olympian. You've seen her skipping on the balance beam, twirling. And Natalie, I still got it, don't I? You've seen Samaya. You've seen Simone twin spinning and, and twirling and jumping and twisting and all of that greatest of all time. She was expected to go to the 32nd Olympiad in Japan and win everything. But when she got there and started on the 27th of July, she withdrew from competition because she was having something they call the twisties, where you would be in the air twisting and moving and forget all about what you were doing, lose concentration and it's dangerous when you're up in the air doing all of that because what goes up and if you land the, the wrong way legs could be broken if you land the wrong way necks could be broken if you land it the wrong way a life might even be lost so she withdrew there is no such thing as a trouble free life What does, what does the 23rd Psalm say? Yay. What did it say about yay? There's no such thing as a trouble for you. You're going to go some places where you don't even know if you'll make it out alive. There's some things that you'll go through that you think, I don't know if I'm going to survive this. There'll be some times out on these streets where you're just stopping to get gas, stopping to go to the grocery store, not bothering anybody. You're just doing what you do. We got word just a, a, a few weeks ago, another one of our friends who is, is out in Utah was out there doing what he do. He was doing his thing, successful businessman. His wife is a minister. They were online that morning. Mark Jackson signed in and said hello to his wife as she was doing the morning devotion on Facebook and Zoom with all of their friends, and that was the last time they heard from him. No such thing. Pookie and Ray Ray have lost their mind out there. No such thing. Tyron and Tarila have lost their mind out there. No such thing. But Jesus said, I'm saying this to you so that you can have this and understand it before you go into the troubles, before trouble catches you and squeezes you and shakes you. I'm telling you this before you encounter it. Be of good cheer. Jesus said, why? Here's what he said. There is. No such thing as a trouble-free life. 
you shall have troubles, but be of good cheer. Yeah, yeah. I have already yeah. overcome the world. Yeah, yeah. Now, that really is your shouting moment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That really is it? Why is that a shouting moment? Because Jesus said, if I can do it, then greater things than these shall you do, shall you do, and shall you do. It's a shouting moment because if they tried to kill Jesus, if they put him in the ground, but he got back up again, there is no trouble. There is no trial. There is no heartache. There is no mountain. There is no valley. There is no storm that he cannot bring you through. Jesus said, when they, they woke him up one day as the little ship was going across the sea and the storms were raging and they said, don't you care that we're in the midst of trouble? And Jesus got up and said, where is your faith? He looked at the winds and said, shut up. He looked at the waves and said, sit, your, sit down. That's sit yourself down. I don't know what, uh, you know, because <laughs> on this Father's Day, I remember my father because you didn't say anything if it sounded like it wasn't right. If we said, if we said somebody lied, he said, go get a switch. He said, but dad, they didn't tell the truth. He said, I told you, you don't even use the word lie. You say they tell a story. Now, don't you say anything that sounds like you're swearing. And if it sounded like that, go out. Now, that was mama that said, go get a switch. <laughs> Daddy said, get in here. And he whipped out his belt and y'all line up. And you know, we, back in those days, they would have had all of our parents in jail. And they started singing that song, didn't I tell you, didn't I tell you, I'm your father, didn't I tell you, didn't I not give you my rules here? That's what Jesus was really trying to do. He was saying, didn't I tell you, God is your father, I am the son of God, and we together, the Father and I are one, and we're telling you, trouble will come. I'll never forget. I'll never forget. I was going through the worst time of my life. Young man, I felt like I lost everything. Family was all broken. Don, I was sitting in the den by myself. I won't forget. I sat there and cried and cried. I was like a ghost haunting a lonely house. Mm -hmm. Nobody there but me. The devil was saying, your ministry is ruined. The devil said, you won't make it out of this. And in those moments, I heard the words, what if? What if I just gave up? What if? What if I let go of the wheel while I'm out on the highway? What if? I mean, I've, I've, I've done all I can. I thought I did the thing right. I, I thought I did what you told me to do, Lord. But here I am sitting here by myself, and the devil said, well, what if? What if you don't make it out of this? I sat there thinking about it. I thought to myself, well, what if I just, what if I'm not here tomorrow? Nobody, it'll be all right. Can we keep it real? I, I know you all are all holy and all of that. I know you've never had any kind of problems that you had to deal with. I know you've always been walking by the word of God, standing on his promises, not sitting on his premises. I know you've always had sunshine and roses. I know I've heard you singing home, home on the range, where the deer and the antelope play, where seldom is heard a discouraging word, and the skies are not cloudy or gray. I know you've been good. That's old. Oh, old, oh, oh. old. I know you've been saying everything is good. I'm all that. But you know what? 
You need to stop using filters when you go on Facebook to try to make yourself look like who you're not. We, we need to stop using, we need to stop pretending like we're all of that. On Facebook, we show ourselves out to dinner at expensive restaurants. On Facebook, we're traveling all around the world. We're vacationing here and going there and come to church throwing one and two dollars in there, but spending millions traveling around everywhere. I don't hear anybody saying anything, but I know I'm talking to somebody. We're all pretending like we're all of that out there. Why don't we just stop pretending and keep it real, sometimes there are troubles in our lives and we do not like who we are, but in the midst of that all, Jesus says, be of good cheer. Yeah. This thing won't kill you if you hold on to my unchanging hand. I'll lead you through this. Jesus says, be of good cheer. They tried to keep me down, but I rose again. Jesus said, be of good cheer. You may be sick sometimes, but I can heal you and bring you through. Jesus says, be of good cheer. They may walk away from you and leave you by yourself and hope that you're broken and hope that you're torn and hope that you're so wounded that you can't get up again, but be of good cheer. You are not alone. Hand me a, I got it right here. I'm just about through. Don't be deceived by that young man, that woman, that young woman that comes to you and says, you're all that and a bag of chips. Don't be deceived. By that young man or that young woman who comes to you and says, when I'm with you, <laughs> don't be deceived because the devil wants to take what you have and ruin your life and walk away from you and leave you and think that you'll be broken and hope that you will take your life. That's why Jesus said, the thief comes but to steal, to kill and destroy. He wants to destroy you, but be of good cheer. Jesus said, I'll give you life more abundantly. Don't accept the little fame that the world gives you because when they pick you up with one hand, they'll knock you down with the other. Don't be deceived when they say, oh, I love you so much. I, ooh, if you'll just go home with me, if you'll just uh, give me some cookies, and, and if you'll just, if you will just, if you'll just, if you just. Don't be deceived. Not like some of them back there. Don't be deceived. <laughs> Don't be deceived. Not like, not like all of us in here. But know that Jesus says, be of good cheer. Because I'm with you. You can overcome this. A couple of years ago, on January the 2nd, 2023, January the 2nd, 2023, it was a Monday. We had just been in service all day for celebrating New Year's Day. On that Sunday morning, we had great worship. It, the new year was off to a great start, January of 2023. On that Monday morning, the sun rose on January 2nd, 2023. It was just another Monday. We were all off for the holiday. Everybody kind of chilling, having collard greens and black eyed peas. We'd had a wonderful day. It was just another day. Everybody was come sundown preparing to go, to go back to work on Tuesday morning. But Monday night football came on, and we all sat down to watch Monday night football, get in a good game before going back to work, one, one more game in the playoffs. 
January 2nd, the sun rose on that day. It was an ordinary day, but into the first quarter of the game, Buffalo Bills were playing the Cincinnati Bengals. Only nine minutes into the game, there was a tackle on the field. It was an ordinary tackle. They went back and reviewed it. There was nothing really odd about it. It wasn't a vicious hit. It wasn't a, a, a terrible hit. It wasn't a dirty play. Nobody did anything they weren't supposed to do. It was an ordinary game. And DeMar Hamlin, after getting up from that tackle, got up and started walking away, talking to his friends, and he fell collapsed on the field. We know that the players stopped. Actually, they didn't even know he had, that anything was wrong. And they were walking away and some said, hey, DeMar, get up. But DeMar didn't say anything. He just lay there because his heart had stopped beating. DeMar Hamlin's heart stopped beating. DeMar Hamlin was dead on the football field. And grown men, six feet Seven and six feet five and 200, 300 pounds went down on their knees and many of them started crying as, as Bills players and Bengals players held hands and prayed on the field because DeMar had died. EMS, EMS folk rushed out on the field and they began immediately to do CPR. And they kept working with him for several minutes, five, six, seven, eight, nine minutes longer. They worked on him, trying to stabilize him, trying to draw him back from the edge of death. Many of you saw it while he was laying there, and they finally were able to get a heartbeat. And then they got him, when they had him stabilized, got him into an EMS vehicle who took him to Cincinnati Regional Hospital. And their advanced medical specialists went to work on him on January the night DeMar died but on January the uh, on the second he died but on the night he walked out of that hospital oh come on come on come on on the second he died but did you get it seven days later Seven days later, he walked up out of death. Seven days later, he walked up out of shadow of the valley of death. He walked, seven days later, he got up. And somebody said the doctors did a wonderful thing. That they, they used their advanced techniques and they, they used their advanced equipment and they did all that they could do. I said, I'm thankful for that, but that didn't fool DeMar. When he was able, he said, I want to thank all the doctors and all of them, but I want to thank my God because if it had not been for the Lord on my side... We can overcome the troubles of the world because of God's mercy. God's mercy will help us overcome. Sometimes we mess up, and it's our fault. But mercy is where God withholds punishment that we really should receive. Mercy is where God withholds consequences that we really should receive. Aren't you glad sometimes God had mercy, has mercy on us? You see, nobody is perfect. We all make mistakes, but God says, if you'll just trust in me, if you'll hold in my hand, if you, Jesus said it this way, if we are faithful, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That means he'll have mercy on you. When David had cheated on his family broken it all up. He said, Lord, have mercy on me. Blot out my iniquities. Cleanse my heart. You know what grace is? Grace is when God gives us what we don't deserve. Yes. 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 Not that you've done anything wrong. Sometimes we just don't deserve it. You know, when, uh, um, when the test is coming on Monday, but we didn't do any studying, <laughs> not on See, y'all sitting up here acting like you don't understand what I'm saying. 
but that's all right. When we didn't do any studying on Friday, if when we hung out all day Saturday, when we had fun all day Sunday, and about 10 o'clock on Sunday night, we thought we kind of skimmed through it, and you get there to the test, and none of the stuff we thought we knew is on the test. But when you get your paper back, there's not a failure on there. There's not a F on there. By the grace of God, you pass that test. It's because that teacher looked and said, well, I know, I know her. She's been in my class all this time. I know what she can do. I know what he can do. I know that he'll be able to do it. So I'm not, I'm giving some grace up in here. Aren't you glad that God offers us grace? The grace of God. Oh, oh, you didn't get it with that? I tell you what, I sat there, I sat there, I sat there in that room and I cried, I cried, and then I heard a voice say, get up. Got in my car, I didn't know where I was going, but I started driving. There were some times while I was driving, voice, another voice said, just let go of the wheel, but I didn't let go of the wheel. I kept driving and when I realized that I was turning into 6599 Highway 212 and, and I, it was familiar because that's, that's daddy's house. And when I turned in, I saw him standing there, standing there on the carport, looking out to the driveway. And he didn't say a word when I got out of the car. I just walked up to him and he threw his arms yes, sir. around me. Yeah. And here's what he said. It's going to be all right. Yeah. I'm trying to tell somebody we shall encounter troubles. But if I could speak to my young self from right here, right now, I would tell, I would say self, it's going to be all right. It might not look good right now, but God has not left you, nor has he forsaken you. It will be all right. If I could speak, I would let Jesus talk, and he would say, be of good cheer. I have already come to world. Anybody in here know that when God is with you, he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ever ask or imagine. So be of good cheer. You may not get the job you want, but be of good cheer. Your bills will be paid. Be of good cheer. You may not have the house that you want, but God will give you a roof over your head. Be of good cheer. You may not have all the health that you want, but God will give you enough health and strength to make it another day. Be of good cheer. For when folk walk away, God will say, I'm still standing right here. Be of good cheer. When your money is funny and your change is strange, he'll still make a way out of no way. Be of good cheer. Every now and then, somebody will come up with a holy handshake. You know that kind of handshake. It's not empty. There's something in the palm of it. And you think, "Woo! thank you, Jesus. Be of good cheer. When your money is funny and your change is strange and you put on, you pull out that dress that you hadn't worn in a whole year, two years, three years, and there's some paper down in it and you pull it out, woo, thank you, Jesus. Be of good cheer for you have already, already, already overcome the world. Amen, amen. And amen. The doors of the church are open. Let us stand on our feet. We'll all have trials and troubles, but don't you worry. Don't you give up. Don't throw in the towel. God is able. God is with us. And by his grace and by his mercy, we shall overcome the world. The doors are open and we extend an invitation today. If there's anyone in this house 
that has not accepted Jesus in the free pardon of our sins, of our sins, walk out right now. Give your life to the Lord. I want you to walk out, grab someone's hand, and have them walk with you. I'll take your hand and you can give your heart to the Lord and eternal life will be yours. You'll still have some storms, but God will be your umbrella. There'll still be some troubles and trials, but God will be your way maker. If you're online worshiping with us and you hear the voice of the Lord speaking to you right now, and you know that your soul is not saved, I want you to get up right now, get our number, our email address, our church address, uh, contact us on social media, but I want you to give your heart to the Lord right now. For there's no greater help in life than to give our lives unto the Lord. We offer Christ to you. Choir, help us sing. Oh, 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 to Christ. We offer Christ to you. Let's sing. Oh, we offer Christ to you. Oh, my brother. We offer Christ to you. We offer Christ, my sister, he will give you brand new life, he will give you brand new life, new life abundantly, oh, Christ. Let's say that one more time. If you're in this house and you hear him speaking to you, if you're worshiping with us, we offer Christ to you. Oh, my brother, we offer Christ. Oh, we do. Sister, he will give you brand new life. He will give you brand new life, new life abundantly. Oh, Christ. Come on and give the Lord a hand clap of praise today. Amen. God bless you. We're at that moment just before our benediction where we'll offer. It's time to bring our tithes and offerings unto the Lord. And so I invite you to prepare your gifts, whatever it is that you will render. We, we invite you, ask you, be generous. Our gifts bless so many. Our gifts help provide food for a hungry community and needy families. Our gifts help to make disciples for the transformation of the world, disciples of Jesus Christ. Our gifts help us to engage in ministry here in this community, but also through the United Methodist Church all around the world. Our gifts, as we gave last week, we are able to bless and help the children of the orphan's home and the children's home, Murphy Harps, because we gave. The Ministerial Education Fund is able to help young students who many even look just like us continue their educations, our gifts. So be generous as much as you can. Let's pray. <clears throat> oh God, we thank you for the gifts as well as the gift givers. Receive the tithes and offerings we present unto you now. Multiply them, 
so that we can engage in ministry here and around the world, multiply them so that we can make disciples of Jesus Christ, multiply them and we will help those who come to us in need. Bless the gifts as well as the gift givers. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. You can give electronically. If you don't have anything, go to the web page and with your smart device, you can always use the electronic feature. Uh, follow the instructions on that, the feature that says donation. You can write a check, mail a check, post office box, church address, or give here today or any day of the week if you want to call and bring your check by the church or your gifts. We are so thankful. Our ushers would come forth now, and as they come, I'm going to invite the rows at the back to prepare to stand and move toward the windows. Follow the usher's instructions and bring your gifts to the altar. Choir, won't you bless us?
standing. Remain standing, and I want to invite our, our new family members, all of those we baptized and received today, to come and stand with me at the altar. And uh, parents, uh, grandparents, uh, you can make the grandparents do it. Make them come up and, and hold that little demarcia. <laughs> <laughs> He's a wonderful little lad, he's wonderful. And he's energetic. And he's, a, he's, a, he's a, just a young, he's a little guy, he's a little guy, amen. I love that, I love that. I want you to turn around and face the church family if you would. There was a time, brothers and sisters, and let's move down, to, move down this, take a step to the left. Yes, we're gonna take a step to the left. Um, there was a time in the life of the church whenever someone came into the church, uh, it, was an, it was an unwritten, uh, unwritten ritual of the church that they received, you know what, it's old school, the right hand of fellowship into the church. And in the days of post-COVID, uh, post uh, you don't necessarily go around shaking everybody's hand all the time now, but we want to receive these new brothers and sisters these little kids that, oh man, I love this. It's a beautiful day in the life of the kingdom of God. Amen. So what I will ask you to do, I want you to come around after the benediction, shake their hands or put your hand on their shoulder and say an encouraging word. But make sure you welcome them into the life and the family the family of God, and the family of Andrew's Chapel. Will you do that today? Yes. All right. And also, uh, uh, brothers and sisters, I have your certificates right here. So after this is over, we want to give you your certificates. Amen? Amen. 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 Now, let's receive our benediction. Come on down. Minister Parker, Dr. Warren, come on down and be with us. Receive this benediction. Now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, unto him who is able to present us on that great day with exceeding joy, to God who is our Father, to God who is our Savior, to God who is the Holy Spirit, to our triune God be power, glory, honor, and dominion, now, henceforth, and forevermore. Let us all sing. Amen. 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 Happy Father's Day to all. Make sure you share love with your fathers and father figures and everybody that's been important to you in your life. Come on and welcome these. Come by, somebody come and shake a hand or touch a shoulder.